Jay is here. Oh, good. But he, can you unmute? Oh, there he is. I'm here. How are you, Jay? We're going to go ahead and get started. I'll, I'll read my little party piece here. Good morning. As chair of the tree committee, I'm declaring that an emergency exists and I'm invoking the provisions of RSA 91A23B. Federal, state, and local officials have determined that gatherings of 10 or more people pose a substantial risk to our community um, in continuing its efforts to combat the spread of COVID-19. In concurring with their determination, I also find that this meeting is imperative to be to the continued operation of town government and services, which are vital to public safety and confidence during this emergency. As such, this meeting will be conducted without a quorum of this body physically present in the same location. At this time, I also welcome members of the public accessing this meeting remotely. Even though this meeting is being conducted in a unique manner under unusual circumstances, the usual rules of conduct and decorum apply. Thank you for your patience. Hi, Kristen. Okay. Um, I guess we need to do our little go around the room and uh, announce yourself and say if there's anybody in the room with you. So, Deb, you want to start? Yeah. Um Deb Twombly, Twitter, uh, and no one's in the room. I'm Eileen Plockhart, and I'm alone in the room. I'm Sally hey, Ward, and I'm alone in the room. Okay. Jay Perkins, I'm alone. And Murphy, I'm alone in the room. Glenn English, I'm alone in the room. Okay, the Dueling Gregs. Kevin, Kevin Breen, I'm alone in the room. Oh, Kevin, okay. I'll let Greg, uh, Greg Beast on next to Parks and Rec, uh, alone in the room. Go ahead, Greg Jordan. Thanks, Greg. Uh, Greg Jordan, I'm at my home office. I do have family members at home, but I am alone at, in the room at the time, um, and I will need to check out at nine today. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, then in that case, let's go ahead and get started. I just have um, to revise that. I don't, that was habit, I think. I am not alone in, in the room. I actually <laughs> am in my cubicle. There's other people around, but I have headphones on. Oh, right. right. I remember that. Um, all right. If you had a chance to take a look at the minutes, did anybody pick up on anything that we need to correct? I didn't find anything. I didn't find anything, and I want to commend our excellent minute preparer. And, Comprehensive and complete. And, and we'd accurate. like to provide some sympathy <laughs> to Gwen, who was battling with a new computer and a new uh -oh. <laughs> some kind system. And I felt her pain as she worked through <laughs> this, but between Gwen and Kristen, and we, we uh, managed to pull it together. So. Thank you very much, Gwen. Well, thank you. Thank you, Sally. Those were kind words. <laughs> mm. So can I move that we approve the minutes or is that not something I can do? I'll make that motion so you don't okay. have to decide. Second anyway. it. All right. Um, I want to take a minute and, and go from here to... Um, do a little feedback on the, the tree walk, the tree walk and talk at Swayze. Um, for those of you who weren't able to be there, um, it was pretty terrific. Um, we started down by the, the boathouse, that end of Swayze, and um, Natasha Stoppel was the, the uh, film camera person, and uh, she had Kevin mic'd up and the rest of us were sort of like, you know, you had to make sure you're going to speak loudly. But for the most part, we grouped around a couple of trees and um, Kevin did a really interesting job of pointing out stuff that a lot of us didn't know about before. And um, we had uh, both Sarah and Jen's 
Sarah's daughter and Jen's whole family came and um, we were a little nervous that maybe we were going to attract too much attention and we'd have too many people, but people just kind of walked by us like, I don't know what they're doing, but that's good. Have a good time, you know? And, um, but it, we went, looked at one of the, the big red oaks. Is that what it was, Kevin? The big tall one. And, um, worked our way from there down to the, the birch tree and, and back and around. And um, so even in it, with snow on the ground and ice shacks on the river, there was still enough information uh, to learn from looking at the trees. One tree had some cabling in it and, you know, Kevin noted how, it, you know, it was really being cared for. And they talked. At, uh, we also had three guys. Oh, here we oh, are. Here we are. We had uh, three folks from the trustees of the Swayze Parkway with us, and uh, they were able to provide some, um, you know, some information that we didn't have before. Um, so that was fascinating. And uh, and once you figure out who is behind which mask. Um, yeah, there's a cable in that tree, if you can see it. So that was a little snatch of it, but you can see it now on our tree committee spot in the conservation uh, site on the town website. Um, and so there, you know, the... Uh, Kevin said he might be interested in doing another one in May and we might want to think about where that might be and whether we can open it to, you know, interested community members and how do we do that safely? Um, that would be a question to ask. Um, Kevin, did you have an idea of where you might want to do one? Uh, I even thought doing the, um, uh, the park again, I have, uh, I'm missing the name. Oh, Gilman the Park. Gilman Park. We do Gilman Park again. Gilman Park, park yeah. I, I think we could go right there again. It just was great. Um, up, not, not Gilman. Um, is that the one with the ball fields where we had our first original one? I yeah, that's Gilman. That's that Gilman. That's Gilman. Yeah, I think that would be a, another great spot because we could do that same little loop again, but with different uh, topics in mind, and you would see all sorts of different things, especially as things are budding out and, and leaves are, will be push, pushed out by then. So uh, I think that just for the ease of having parking there and about to be. And that would be fairly easy to do it safely. Um, another nice plus is that uh, Greg and his crew are, are looking to to plant some trees along that big green area. And we could sort of bring a little more focus to, to Gilman Park um, that would sort of alert people to a little bit of a preview. You know, here's, here's the woods around it. And, you know, things may look a little different in six months or a year if some new trees go up. And... Um, so that might be kind of a fun thing. Greg Beeson, do you think that's something that we could work on? See there? Maybe he's, he'll come back. Hello, Greg. Greg, are you there? <laughs> All right, we'll get back to him, but I can check with him and see. Um, and then we can come up with a date. What do you think about how could we open it up to more than just the committee? Put it on, put it on the, uh, you know, on the website, I guess, as an event. But do we want to have, we, we'd need to have some sort of a, a, a limited number of people that could do it and how do we, well, I don't know. 
maybe Kristen can talk to that, but you could have a, you can have a simple registration with just an email. Cause I've done that where you just email a person and then when they're the, whatever maximum number you're saying can attend, you know, then it's sold out. And it's obviously free. I mean, you can have a number of people and say, you can register by emailing da da da. So you don't have to get into a complicated program. I think it would be um, useful to touch base with our health officer to see what the current yes. guidelines are, because I think that we're in a, we're in a state of change. Things are yeah. in flux yeah. right now with vaccines and re- redu- reducing the distance um, recommendations from six feet to three feet. And so what, what are the current guidelines? And, um, and then we, we could... Um, make a specification about the number of people and if Kristen's right. willing to do it have a have registration I think that would be the way to do it does that make sense to you Kristen yeah all that makes sense I mean I think Greg and the health officer would need to um, would it would be helpful to consult with them to find out what the current requirements are hi Greg um, and yeah. see what kind of public activity we can have Greg you want to chime in uh, the select board has been approving a lot more uh, events. So uh, as long as we put safety protocols in place, I don't see it being a problem. And with current guidelines and universal guidelines, yeah, I think we can definitely start offering it up to more people. Are there numbers, limits on numbers? They, they not really. <laughs> there is, but there's not really. Uh, for instance, the there's a couple events like our, our summer concert series got approved and it could have up to 200 people there. Really? So as long as I they think- can social distance <clears throat> and wear masks, we're, we're good. So I think, yeah, we could definitely yeah. do something and have like, if we wanted to come up with a cap, we can, but I don't know if we'll That's- ever hit that cap. Even, even not, if not for COVID, but I think it makes sense to have a limit just for functionality of the event. Yeah, I, I think um, in order for... I'd be happy to set up registration. In order for us to hear what Kevin or anybody is going to tell us, you, you can't have, you know, 30 or 40 people. You know, I, I think um, we probably had 15, maybe 12 or 15. I mean, some of them were kids and some of them... Um, you know, sort of drifted in and out in terms of focusing on stuff. But in, in that space that I'm remembering that we went to, um, Kevin, I would think if we had, you know, 15, 20 tops, then everybody would be able to get something from it. If you get bigger than that, I think you're going to lose people. Yeah, I agree. That that sounds good. Eileen, what UNH has been doing is um, what we have great demand is is breaking up into groups. So if there was high demand and I was available, I would be happy to, you know, lead a smaller group if Kevin was leading another group, for instance. Oh, okay. Uh, All know, right. So that's the way you and H we've gotten around some some popular events by splitting into smaller cohorts if needed. Oh, okay. And, right. and making sure we don't intermingle with the other group to, you know, to yeah, avoid right. those large numbers. But all right, maybe Kevin, we, we could sort of kick around a, a potential date in, in May. We don't have to, to decide on it today. And then we can uh, look at ways to communicate, advertise it. And um, depending on what kind of response we get, we, we could use you and or um, Greg together to, to um, make it work. You know, if we ended toward, if, if we aim toward, later in May, as opposed to early May, we'll have a little more time to maneuver it. All right. Yeah, sound, sounds good. Okay. I'll come up with a couple dates. Okay. Thank you. All right, Great. you can email stuff back to me too, and we can sort of go from there. <laughs> this is a, um, I just had a tangent off of the tree walk. Um, I wasn't able to attend, but I watched the video and I think it's, it's great that we're doing it. And we've talked about this before, but I think at some point, I think we, we need to have a system for labeling trees so that yeah. um, I don't know what that would be, but I'm happy to work on that at, at any point um, in terms of the preparation of labels and what's the best way to mount them and how do we want to tackle that? Because I think uh, I think labeling trees would be a really 
useful educational thing to do. We just did that uh, with, in Portland. We just actually, they're going up, I believe, next week. Um, and not, not only in Portland, I mean, Portsmouth, the Garden Club did um, just six, I think, six trees on a popular walk um, down by Little Harbor. There's like a lot of trails down there. Oh, yeah. And um, we've already got the company that we used and the, uh, the uh, nail that you use. And I'm sure that you know, Greg and, and uh, Kevin know these things, but, but it's, it's a, you know, weatherproof thing and you put it at a certain height so they don't get fooled around with and um, very, you know, very legible. But that's certainly a project we could do. You do need funds to buy the these sturdy labels. I think yeah. we did six and I think we did six labels and it was maybe a hundred dollars. I, I think, you know, doing something small like that, even if it's just Swayze Parkway, yeah. um, we could coordinate with the trustees there, too. And, and uh, you know, as much traffic as Swayze Parkway has had, um, I think it would be a great thing to be able to do. So, Deb, if you could maybe communicate some of that sure. detailed information to Sally and, and we could come up with a way to do to start small and, and do that in a couple of places. Yeah, I like that. Um, the next thing I'd like to go to is the tree plantings at Park Street Common. And also to let you know that there's a yoga group in town that's doing a special Arbor Day yoga event. And everybody that's doing some yoga is going to do it for X number of minutes and X number of minutes equals X number of dollars and they want to go work it towards the purchase of a tree. I said, yoga's in trees, it works for me. Um, and so I, I haven't heard anything much more than, uh, than that first communication, but I'll, I'll keep you posted on that. Um, it looks like uh, the, the tree planting in, on Park Street Common, in spite of the level two drought situation, we should still be okay for um, planting those trees late April, early May. The trees have already been purchased. They're already tagged out at uh, Stratum Circle Nursery. And uh, Jay's um, on, on board for... Um, being able to plant them. And I know Kevin said he might be able to help too. So um, we just need to set up a date and say, okay, here it is. And then I can communicate to the families again and say the, the non-planting party that we had back in September or October, whenever it was, um, is now going to be a real one and bring your friends. So um so we, we could actually declare that our Arbor Day for the year if we need to and, um, and call it good because we, with three trees, we should get three families worth of uh, folks and, and people from the neighborhood. So we could get a nice group of people and we'd still make sure that everybody wore masks and everything was on the up and up as far as that went. Um, so that's the plan there. We don't have a specific date yet. I was sort of wanting to get the okay from uh, Public Works and Jen, who was concerned about um, the water level issue. But we're going to be using tree diapers on all three trees, and I think we can do it safely and um, and safe for the tree um, so that uh, I think we'll be okay. So, but uh, we just want to reassure her so that she doesn't all of a sudden say, Oh, I, I meant to tell you, you really can't do that. <laughs> um, she should be fine doing it in the spring like that. I, I, I think she will. I think she will. Just uh, FYI, Arbor Day this year is Friday, April 30th. April so, 30th. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a Friday. Okay. Just FYI. All right. We can we can aim for that or somewhere in the neighborhood and call it good. Right? Yep. Um, so um, very briefly, I, I met with people on the sustainability committee last night. Um, 
because they were interested to know what we were up to. And I sort of gave them a little synopsis of our efforts as a committee and what we were doing. And, and they were also very interested in the educational portion of it where people who would like to know what kind of trees to plant, you know, in their yards, anywhere. Um, and we talked uh, about native species that were going to be sustainable in terms of surviving insects and drought and pollution and everything. So you're looking for trees that can tackle anything. We want plugger trees is what we want. They can do anything. Um, but they had a lot of good questions. And, uh, you know, so that was an interesting connection to me. Um, but, uh, you know, the bulk of what we want to try to do this morning is to see where we are on our tree ordinance and how do we get from A to B and to be ready to, or, or is it, you know, will we be ready to, to do something before the select board? What's our sort of, our timeline kind of thing. Um, I looked over the, the uh, tree ordinance that Portsmouth has and sort of, pulled in some interesting things, but uh, maybe if anybody else, I, I don't want to monopolize this, if anybody else looked at some some of the other ordinances and said, here's a piece that we ought to do, we ought to add, and, and here's something that we didn't think about. Um, anybody want to jump in? Well, the piece that I would talk to you earlier about was uh, Durham, which is, you know, well established as a tree city for 40 years is way ahead of us. But they have Article 22 in their ordinances that um, defines if somebody comes in to do a development, because as Jay has mentioned, the oversight on developing, even if it's on public land, they come in and just take out all the trees mm -hmm. and um and so they have a very uh, pretty defined process in Durham about how a developer comes in and, and the oversight that the town has on trees to keep and trees uh, that they can cut down. Um, so I don't know if we want to get into that or if we're just on step one here where we're not getting into um, when the planning board gives land, you know, allows a, a developer to come into develop. Kristen, what are your thoughts? Um, I think we should start. So we do have some regulations in the zoning ordinance right now for development. Um, and I would rather see us focus on a town ordinance to start. Yeah. So something that sets the standards on town property, then we can set a baseline for to work from. And, you know, if that somehow down the road dictates changes to our zoning ordinance, consider that. But I think um, in terms of regulatory stuff, I like the educational approach. I like something that the town adopts as a policy, um, and then we can move it towards zoning should we find deficiencies. It's just right, a much more right. complicated process. It is, it is more complicated, but, but they have it there as a guideline later. Yeah. I agree with, with Kristen and Kristen on a side note, I would like to talk to you sometime on the uh, land use. We have a development in town that was put in 10, 15 in amongst a bunch of white pine. And now all of a sudden the pine, which are perfectly healthy with these winds we've been having, the how people are scared and they want to pretty much clear cut i have talked them off the ledge for a while but i think down the road looking that could be an issue yeah, so we, we can, can talk about that we can talk about that for sure jay okay thank you i i do think that uh you know kristen's point of beginning with just town spaces and public parks and using that in a way, as, as part of our educational tool to say, this is how, you know, whether it's down at Gilman Park or at Park Street Common or whatever, this is how you plant the trees. This is how, you know, even 
talking about how trees were selected. Why did you pick this tree down here and, and use that opportunity to demonstrate good planting techniques and also good, uh, you know, somebody mentioned, uh, I can't remember where I read it. You, know, you, don't, you don't plant trees, you plan them. You put them in the ground and you plan how you take care of them for years and years and you pay attention to them. And if something isn't right, you go and look at it. Um, after reading this story about the 250-year-old sugar maple in Kensington that they recently had to take down, you thought somebody really watched over that tree for 250 years. And what an amazing, I drove out to see it, but it was pretty, pretty amazing. Um, so, I mean, if we can kind of make sure that part of what we do is, you know, actions speak louder than words. We can put together a booklet on how to plant a tree or we can make a video. But if people see how things are being planted and how they're being taken care of, you know, and I think an example, you know, that we need to look at is, you know, some of the, the, the trees on Lincoln Street that were planted in the heat and with without some, you know, like, that's not a good, that's not a good example. You don't want to say, okay, here's 40 new trees, but uh, 12 of them died. You know, we want to make sure that whatever we plant thrives and the reason it does is because we did this that and the other thing so i think if we can use that as our guideline to say okay here's our tree ordinance um and and focus on you know park you know town park lands and and public right away spaces for the town um that uh you know, that's where, that's where we could be. Um, I thought it was, yeah, Sally. So I, um, in thinking about a approval of this by the select board, I'm envisioning an ordinance that has different sections. So we have an introductory section, and I think we need to have a, the standards and specifications section, which is the technical things like, what are our definitions, who, the tree, you know, define things for people. What is a public tree? What are public spaces? And then a third section, I think, should be resources. And that would be, so, so those resources don't need to have approval per se. It's educational part of, of the tree ordinance. So that would be where we'd have a link for how to plant a tree, how to plan for what the list of recommend, recommended trees would be. So that that's a more fluid part of the ordinance that um, I'm envisioning that the select board wouldn't have to approve each and every yeah, one right. of those resources. But right. what we want to present to them is what they do need to approve, which is the ordinance per se. But the third section that I'm envisioning would be, as I say, resources that um, right. we could add to that, change it, and and, and yeah, it as could be, yeah, you could you could uh, expand it. And, you know, as as the years go on, it wouldn't be written in stone. Okay. It was interesting when I looked at Portsmouth. Um, like Durham, they had an RSA. You know, that gave them the authority to have this ordinance and they began with definitions you know the city and the, and the tree warden and the person in the street tree and urban forest and public greenway and i hadn't really thought about definitions but i suppose that might be a good thing to have and then they the next thing their next topic was findings which really was what we called our, our kind of our vision. You know, why do we care about trees? And, um, and then the purpose section would be where we really want to get into. The purpose of having this ordinance is to protect and plan and, uh, and care for the trees in these public and park spaces in town. Um, and then they did, um, someone along the line said, you know, before you uh, go before the select board, you should have it um, 
viewed by, you know, legal, get some legal assistance to look at the wording and make sure that if you're creating an ordinance, there's a way to um, make it clear and, and, um, and ha have it, you know, whatever authority you're, you're giving it. Um, we're not going to be able to go into the depth of some of the stuff that Portsmouth has um, with penalties for taking down trees you're not supposed to and legal ramifications for making sure you pay your thousand dollar fine and stuff like that. I mean, I don't think we're going to have the ability to do that. Um, but we need to make sure that somewhere along the line, there is a communication for, yes, we have a tree warden and, and how do we, you know, like, here's the issue. Here's Jay trying to work with um, families who think they just want to cut these trees down because they're going to fall. And he's trying to educate them, you know, how do we make sure that people know that we have a tree warden? and that he's properly compensated and or he has the extra help he may need um, as the town gets bigger and bigger. So, um, I mean, in addition to that, um, I, I, I know we have talked about the, the, this committee um, and I am assuming that this will be a continuing uh, group of people whether it's us or some of us, or if it's maybe an entirely new group, but do we want to have something in our ordinances um, talking about the commission and what the commission's role is in supporting Jay, supporting the mission of, yeah. of, of our town? Uh, we really didn't, we didn't talk about that we, in, in our in our initial paperwork that, um, that we put together. There is one line, uh, the very end, just saying specific guidelines for cooperation between the tree committee and the school committee. We, I mean, it's mentioned, but it might be good to sort of clarify what the commission or committee's role is uh, going forward. Yeah, I, I think that's a very good point. I know in Portsmouth, they have a public greenery committee, which is essentially kind of like our committee here. And um they're very involved and and I can't remember the wording for how they're connected to um, the ordinance issues, but um, that's a good point. And, and since we're a subcommittee of the Conservation Commission, um, you know, maybe what we need to do is, uh, you know, get some input from the Conservation Commission to say, okay, um, if we put together some sort of an ordinance, how do you see, um, do you need a stamp of approval before we go to the select board? It would seem like maybe we do. Well, it would be good to have their endorsement. Yeah. No, what do you I, think I, on that, Kristen? I think it should go to the Conservation Commission before it goes to the select board. Yeah. Okay. Do you agree, Kristen? Yeah, I do. I yeah. think, I mean, I, I like the concept of having the role of a tree committee, however um, defined and what those responsibilities are. Um, I hope that it becomes more of a supportive, um, you know, a supportive committee versus a, you know, an additional layer of, of um, <laughs> complication. But um, yeah, yeah, right. I, I think, I think we, we you know, we want to be there to be sure we can support Jay um, in his yeah. needs or additional funding for um, for what his needs might be. Same with Greg Bisson. Um And yeah, I think I, I don't know that I'd go to the commission asking what their thoughts are. I would provide a draft that they could react to and get some feedback yeah. on. Okay. Um, and and then once once you incorporate those changes, maybe send a final draft and um, request their support to uh, when you go to the select board. It might be helpful to do another check in with the select board um, just to make sure they understand the concepts of what you're thinking of. You know, if you do have roles and responsibilities of this tree committee, I think it would be helpful to get the select board's feedback on that, maybe have an offline chat with Greg and Jay to talk about what their needs are. 
um, and ensure those needs are adequately addressed in, in the, um, the ordinance. I think, excuse me, one, one key thing that uh, I could get out of this with the ordinance is when it's finally approved and done, if there was a way to get uh, letters or something out to all the arborists and all the tree companies in the area, landscapers, putting them on notice that any tree perceived or in the right of way cannot be just pruned or cut, cut without calling first. We get a lot of people who assume that they own to the side of the road that I go by and one day there's a tree, the next day there's a stump. And they said, I didn't think I needed anything. So most of the trees, that work is done, is done by tree companies. So if they got the message, that would really help a lot. That, no, you can't do that in Exeter. We need to contact them. Unitil is really good about any tree work they have to do. They call well in advance of any tree work they have to do in town. If the tree companies would do that in the landscapers, that would be great. So we had a good model. I, I think it was a good model with the Healthy Lawns Clean Water Committee where, um, you know, we wanted to share the information about organic practices and minimization of pesticides. And so we, we had a, it was like a lawn care forum. I forget the title, Gwen, maybe you can correct me, but I, I could see something similar to that. Maybe specific, maybe it's not a, a meeting that they come to, but an organized outreach activities specific to that group um, and then we could have outreach designed for the town of Exeter residents um, and I think that's an incredible role for this committee very powerful I like that I like Jay's idea to send out a uh, companies and inform them that they need permission and once he you know as he says that once the order, ordinance is through so, Jay, if, if a tree company is coming in, let's say, and they have orders to trim trees or cut trees or whatever, um, who's giving them the orders if it's not Unitil? It's the, it, generally the homeowner. If you, a lot of homeowners, if they have a tree in front of their house and it's next to the road, they think they own where they mow their grass or what have you oh, right. to the side of the road they uh, perceive it as a hazard is gonna fall on the house and they take it down when 90% of the time there are other alternatives that I think Kevin and uh, Greg can both agree with that. You know, we can do some pruning of the crown. We can take the dead wood out. In the old growth, we've done a lot of cabling in town. In fact, the cable that you saw in the parkway was done by our department years ago. Yeah. So there are other alternatives other than cut it down and most homeowners don't realize that and they may not like the outcome but you know we make it as safe as we possibly can and save the tree and then there's the whole issue of when you realize that you take a tree down you're taking down a tree that provides cooling that provides shade that provides all kinds of stuff and you know, if you take down a huge 75-year-old tree and, and put up a little crab apple or something, um, it's going to be years before you get any happy sustainability out of that. And people just sort of, I don't know why in this day and age that, you know, they, people are not as tuned in to the value of a tree. Uh, I know when we did a thing at the Lincoln Street School, we had some tags that, you know, you could put on trees. This tree provides, you know, X number of dollars in heating and cooling, um, provides this, uh, saves money, uh, all kinds of stuff. Um, and, you know, it's it's really frightening to me that the, the, the random tree cutting seems to be just an answer. And uh, from what I see, it's picking up in momentum with the climate change and these windstorms we've been having. People have a fear, and that's what's happening. A lot of places they see on the news all these trees down across houses and things like that, and they think that oh, that tree is going to come down in a in a storm. Yeah. So there are things we can do to mitigate that a little bit, but yeah. um, 
once they have the fear, it's going to land on the house and kill them. There's nothing you can really do. Yeah. So that's happening a lot more than it used to. So we need the anti-fear campaign. <laughs> well, I do think we could get there. So, I mean, part of the problem is there hasn't been an, enough recruitment, right? Like we used to have consistent street tree planting. Not that you're not doing your best, Jay, but if we had a street tree plan that we were adding young, you know, to balance out this age um, age class issue that we have throughout town, I think I think it wouldn't be such a big deal to lose an ancient tree because we'd have, you know, moderately old trees nearby to replace it. You are correct. Mm -hmm. I, I personally, and I, sorry to keep harping on Dover. I assure you it has nothing to do with my, where I live, but um, I really like a simple ordinance that then ties into a plan. And that plan can talk about, you know, similar to what you had said, Sally, that plan can talk about planting guidelines and references to the regulations. It's something that we could update regularly, you know, as trees are planted and removed, um, the health conditions change over time. So I'd love to see a nice, simple town ordinance that establishes the authorities and the responsibilities and then ties into a street tree plan. And yeah. If I had my druthers. Yeah. I agree. I know that Gwen was able to get a hold of um, the fellow from, is it Rockingham Planning Commission? Gwen? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, and I didn't get back to him. I, I sent a couple emails to Tim, who is the director of the Rockingham Planning Commission, and uh, he didn't get back to me. And I finally decided to take a chance and scoot up there yesterday afternoon. And he wasn't in the office, but the um, uh, the woman who kind of runs the, the show up there uh, got me online with him. And I just told him briefly what we were looking for. And he works closely with that uh, Stratford uh, planning regional planning commission and has worked with the director there in, in other capacities so he was going to try to reach out with her to her yesterday afternoon he thought he said they had typically the rpcs have a great relationship with one another and they're willing to share and work collaboratively on projects um he did ask if there was if if it did involve gis work and and if rob was going to be if he had the time and and would it was able to help us out do we have any funds that could potentially be put toward that and I said I didn't have the ability to say yes or no to that, but that we would be talking about it today. And I don't know what it would I don't know what that dollar amount might be. And I don't know if if there would be funds in the Conservation Commission, perhaps, or if we could um, somehow raise some money to to help out with this project but uh he will he said he would get back to me and as soon as i hear from him i can let you know um but he seemed more than willing to to do what he could to assist us yeah i i do think dover's um plan in involving folks in, in neighborhoods is just such a, an ideal way to communicate stuff and 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 get a job done that um, I would love to see that proceed. And, you know, if there's a way between Tim and, and folks in Dover or whatever we can do, um, and maybe even let the select board know that this is what we're looking to do. And golly gee, if you've got any money hanging around there. Um, I do think it would be great to have RPC's GIS support, um, but I think there needs to be some way to transition the data so that maybe they help set it up. But ultimately, we have access and ability to manipulate the data so that we have this thing that as we do continued inventories, we continue to add data to it. I, I just hate to have kind of stagnant maps that can't be updated without yet another um, financial contribution. Oh, right. That's okay. a good point. All right. Um, do you think that, do you think those funds, where do you see those coming from if we do need something? Would that, you know, Eileen mentions the, the select board and maybe getting other town funds, or do you see it potentially coming from 
Conservation Commission or or some other source? Am I putting you under the bus by asking? You this? <laughs> I mean, I I I tend to have a very conservative view on what conservation fund dollars can be used for. Yep, I and totally get that. In my personal opinion, I'm not on the commission. Sally, you are, um, so maybe you can speak next. But um, I I do not feel it's appropriate to use. Um, conservation do- conservation fund dollars to fund street trees because in my mind street trees are mitigation for development okay but having said that there is a ton of habitat value to trees um, you know there's great information out there and I did supplement the um, tree species guide that Dover did added some natives and I added like the pollinator number of species of pollinators, each of the trees support there. There's significant value to street trees, but I don't know. I think that needs a more robust discussion than I can offer right now. I I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I I, um, agree with Kristen in terms of the use of conservation funds. And I think what we need to do as a committee is to have a conversation with the Conservation Commission about a separate funding stream for uh, for our work. And I think it would need to be modest, and um, but it, it needs to be a, a, a separate discussion. So perhaps that the next step on that would be to have that conversation with the Conservation Commission. Um, and we, we've talked before about having a line item in the, the town budget for trees. And perhaps it needs to be a separate thing that would be approved by the select board or uh, even even potentially a warrant article. I don't know uh, the, the technicalities about that. But I think it's important for us to have a source of funding. Um, and we can add to that with fundraisers, but, but I think it needs to be, you know, that elevates the discussion and says, this is what's, this is important to the public, that our work on trees yeah. is important to the public, even if it's a modest amount. Yeah. Absolutely. So. And our, our local tree inventory did a great job of documenting the financial value of the investment yeah. we have yeah, out right. there today. So I, I think that we have a lot of good, good information that could be used to, um, present to the budget committee and justify the need for additional dollars working through J. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so a next step would be um, conversation with the conservation commission, but also with the budget committee. Mm -hmm. I guess my next uh, thought is how do we, keep refining this and what kind of a timeline is realistic. It sounds like we may want to just speak to the select board again and, and tell them where we are. We might, we want to present something to the conservation commission in a draft form to say, this is the process. This is where we're, this is what we're working on. Um, And uh, so, um, I think we have a consensus, but but maybe not, that the ordinance that uh, the ordinance should be a simple document yeah. that is supplemented can be supplemented extensively, and so I think we 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 want to present that to a draft to the conservation commission. So we need to have a, a process for developing that draft, um, and. Uh, and, and a timeline. And I think, I think a formal, we, one of the questions raised in the agenda was, when should we go before the select board? And I think as a, um, as to specifically approve the ordinance, we're not ready. We need to have a draft that is reviewed by conservation commission and then uh, with their feedback, then revise it and present it to the select board. So I'm thinking June yeah. would be um, the earliest, but the simpler we keep it, the better and the um, more efficient the, the process would be. All right, here, here's my um, conundrum. Um, looking at a couple of things on my plate in terms of getting the trees on Park Street Common organized and maybe helping uh, Greg with trees at uh, Gilman Park, um, that for me to jump in and say, I'll be, part of the subcommittee to do this. Um, 
I wondered if if there was a way that you know a couple of you could maybe throw together some basic draft and and uh, you know send it around for some additional feedback and and do we want to say let's see if we can put together a draft and then plan for the next conservation commission meeting does that sound doable well so two, two things one um I would volunteer to be on a subcommittee to draft this. Uh, my, my big constraint is I really can't do meetings so much. I can do things on my own time and yeah. fit it in where I can. So just as a, as a, as a tangent, as an aside, to let you know that um, this month is my last month on the Conservation Commission. Yeah. So I will speak to them about uh, a, 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 a liaison. I would like to, to continue on this committee, but... Uh, not as the liaison to conservation. So oh, right. ha having said that, um, um, so I, I would volunteer for, for a draft. And w w I think we have some good ideas from the discussion today. If there are other, I don't know, Gwen, if you would want to. Sure. I'd love that. to work with you, Sally. Okay. Um, so if there are other ideas that, that haven't come up that you think, should definitely be in the ordinance per se, then share those with Gwen and me, and then we'll, we'll um, work on this for, um, for the, for the, before and until our next meeting. So the yeah. next meeting of the Conservation Commission, just so you know, is next week. So it's always the second Tuesday in the month. Second Tuesday. So if we aim for the, the Tuesday in May, I don't know the date of that, but that would be, uh, if, if we could have another meeting of this group before then so that we could uh, review May, the draft or we could May even... 11th. May 11th is the second Tuesday in May. Okay. So May 11th. So if we had a draft, we could, uh, I think that this would be okay with the rules and we could even circulate a draft offline. I don't think we need to have a meeting for that. Is that, is that, do you yeah, agree with that, yeah. Kristen? I would think so. Technically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can work on the draft circulated as long as the decisions to move that forward are public okay. here. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So we would want to have a meeting before May 11th. And, and in the meantime, circulate a draft offline so we can fine tune it. And then I guess I would be happy to volunteer. I'd love to take Dover Street Tree Plan and take components of it, like the techniques, and maybe sit with members of this committee outside, like Jay or Greg or Kevin or who, whoever is appropriate on the species of trees, the planting techniques and things of that nature, and kind of refine that for our needs so that we could be moving both of these kind of simultaneously. Um, yeah. We might not get it finalized by May, but at least yeah. we could move that part forward as well. Yeah. Great idea. I agree. Yeah. That would be part of the resources rather than the ordinance per se. Right. So that right. would be more fluid. I think um, that part of the uh, ordinance or whatever we call it is a lot more fun <laughs> than getting the precision of the ordinance wording. Um, but then when you get down to, okay, what do you want to include? And what do people, what is the average person in town want to know? What do they need to know? What can we help them with? Yeah. You know? Okay, so thinking that uh, just just while I'm looking at a calendar here, um, that the Conservation Commission is going to meet on the 11th, could we go ahead and meet May 5th, which is a Wednesday? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That'll give us a week ahead of time before this goes before the Conservation Commission. Cinco de Mayo. Sounds, sounds good to good. me. 830? 830, yeah. May 5th, 8 30 p.m. No. 8 30 a.m., Jay. I got your attention. <laughs> you did I'm get late. our attention. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. <laughs> well, it is Cinco de Mayo, so we could have, you know. All right. We could wear have our Mexican hats. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. Okay. Margaritas all around. <laughs> I'm also um, kind of thinking about the outreach aspect as well. And I know this is a lot on our plate, but Deb, I you seem to really have some great concepts and I would love to work with you on maybe that outreach component of what do we want to send to the tree companies and Jay, Jay or Greg, uh, whoever else wants to join that. Great. But maybe we could start that part as well. Great. Who did you say, who did you suggest getting, getting involved in that? I, did, I am Deb. asking Deb, but yeah. Sweet. Deb Dwombly just got volunteered. There. Oh, Deb. Okay. Good job. <laughs> I, I missed the name. I don't told you at all. <laughs> Yay, Deb. <laughs> okay. I would be happy to help with that. Um, also, Gwen, I know the majority of folks in the area contractor wise that's a uh, tough egg to crack just so everyone is aware of <laughs> but uh i'd be happy to have give you some feedback on that great that's good that's helpful see if we can be tougher than the the egg that needs to be cracked <laughs> yeah <laughs> So if we go ahead and if Gwen and Sally, you work on a draft and uh, as we think of something else we forgot to mention today, we'll, we'll send it on to you and, um, and then we'll all be able to, to take a look at something, meet again before uh, the next, the May 11th Conservation Commission meeting um, so that they have a, a look at it. And um, I can maybe just let Nico or somebody know that uh, maybe sometime in June we might want to bring something to them, but we don't have any hard, fast timeline yet. We're, it's still a work in progress, but just so they know, we're still chugging along here. Um, I have asked uh, the, the arborists in uh, Portsmouth if they had a recommended tree list that they use, I couldn't find it in their in their ordinance list. There, but I know they must have something. I know they do. And um, there were several. I think Deb might have mentioned, or maybe it was Kristen saying, you know, recommend. You know, people may want to know if if these are recommended trees. Well, here's a tree for a flowering tree. Here's a you know, different kinds of purposes in trees so that we could actually have categories um, that might be useful for people. Sally? So um, just to remind you that the Dover does have that such a list, which I'm, I'm actually comparing that list to the UNH Cooperative Extension list of native trees. Oh, and, okay, uh, super. And I had uh, put out a message to this group about, has anyone been in touch with our local nurseries? And I'm going to have a conversation with Dave, Dave Short, Short about yeah. um, the availability of, of the trees that we might want to put on our recommended list so we could have an asterisk or something. I mean, yeah. it's not to restrict somebody from getting a tree some, someplace else, but it would be good to know which trees can be uh, obtained at our local nurseries. Right. And so that's kind of in process. Yeah. He's very good about, uh, you know, supporting native species and, and everything else. So I, I'm thinking he could... Uh, he could champion the cause, not that he's the only one who could yeah. provide uh, trees, but yeah, I'm, I'm nice thinking to of, be able uh, to deal locally. Yeah, I'm thinking of, uh, so there's there's um, Stratum Circle and Rolling Green and Pawtuckaway. Yep. Right. The big ones that come to mind, there might be others that people yep. w uh, would want to recommend. And so, Sally, I replied, but it was pretty close to the time this meeting started. But uh -huh. I went through Dover's list and uh -huh. I identified which ones were native and not. Oh, um, Jim Martell weighed in a little bit on some of the calls that I made in terms of native or um, and maybe they were naturalized. I'm not sure. But um, and then I added, I, I think it was Lexington or Arlington Mass has an incredible list of native tree species. Yeah. And they broke it down um, by a whole host of features. So I pulled from there and some other um, some other resources. And is that is that an attachment in what you sent? 
Yeah, I, I kind of supplemented below Dover's spreadsheet. I supplemented with some additional right. species. So I would love whatever, when you talk to, um, what you know, I don't know. It, if you want to do it separately, that's fine. But I'd love to be a part of those conversations. Great. Um, and, uh, and because I really do think that it should be kind of a balance of what's easily accessible, but also how do we drive I don't mean this rudely, but how do we drive stocking yep. buyers by yep. having um, some recommendations that move things more toward native? And there is yeah. a great resource out there. I think it's the National Wildlife Foundation who collaborated with Doug Talame. Doug and Talame. Yeah. yeah. What is it called? Doug Talame has some great presentations about the importance of native trees and the habitat value that they provide. But he collaborated with... Um, I think it's a Na National Wildlife Federation or Foundation, and there's a website that you can enter in any species, and it populates it with whether it's native or not, and um, how many, how many, I think specifically it's caterpillar species, because the significance of the caterpillars are they support the birds, and et cetera, et cetera, and so they assign sort of like a habitat value to the trees based on the number of species they support. Huh. And so I added that to the Dover list as well. When we had native trees pop up, I added the number of pollinators it supported. Yeah. And I think it's a great idea to drive the availability rather than to just be receptive to what's already there. I think that's yeah, a really sure. good point in, a, in, a, in a cooperative collegial yeah. sort of way. <laughs> And Dover's um, document did already start to sort things for heat tolerance and salt tolerance. Yeah. Yeah. And so things like, you know, climate change, you know, a, a long drought, we'll, we'll be able to figure out which trees are recommended, you know, for those future conditions. So hopefully that will meet some of the thoughts that the Sustainability Committee had offered you. I didn't watch the meeting, but um, it sounded like they had, had wanted to be sure we were incorporating the future um, needs for, for our, based on our climate criteria for tree selection. Okay, I know that Gwen, you have to leave, don't you? Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. <laughs> She's running to the dentist. Um, I, I think we know when we're going to get together next, May fifth. Um, I did want to check in with Greg um, Bison about uh, your thoughts on on the trees for Gilman Park, but we can talk separately to see. You know, I know Kevin had said something about maybe he could. Um, chime in about some choices and, and planting and what your time frame is. Um, yeah, and I spoke, uh, Jay and I spoke about this. Uh, we're still actually, <laughs> surprise, surprise, COVID is delaying the guardrail installation replacement. They're still <laughs> waiting on the lumber to come in. So oh, we have okay. to have that put in first before we can oh, okay. uh, make okay. safe and pick out the trees to go in it. So Okay. So we can be in a holding pattern. You can let us know when the guardrails all good to go or something. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, I have one quick thought, and this isn't to change any plans for Gilman, but I am. I'm still, um, and this isn't a pressure at all to to Kevin or anybody else, but I'm still more than happy to host um, a tree walk here if you're interested. Oh yeah, right. And we have tons of parking. It's not, you can park on the road. It's, you can park on our driveway. Um, but I, I just look around at the trees we have and there's, there's such a variety and some of them are very old and some of them have cables. Some of them have lightning strikes. Some of them have big limbs that, you know, look like they're, you know, danger, danger, danger. But <laughs> so there, I, I say that because there are a lot of issues that could be helpful in if, if someone that is an expert could look at them and say, if you have something like this in your yard, here are the thoughts that uh, might come into play. Um, so it's, it's there. It will continue to be there if and when you want to do that. And I'm perfectly happy having people from town come on the property with the group. It's not, that's not a problem. So so I just throw that out there for well, Gwen, you know, it might be interesting if we did more of just a, a committee walk around your yard 
that thinking about what we're trying to put together for the ordinance and the tree list and, and the other kinds of things that we want to do. I have yeah. a meeting. I have to jump off. Oh, yeah. Talk to you later. Bye, Deb. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I should go, too. I have yeah, no, no. Get going. Get going. I don't want to go. Fine. <laughs> You're fine. Um, we've got a fair amount of things to do between now and, and May, and... Uh, I thank you all for your time. Some, there was a question or a survey that went around. How do people feel about Zoom meetings? And as much as we're not, not loving Zoom, I think in some ways, it is kind of easier to get to a meeting, mm -hmm. um, to be physically where you are at home or whatever. Um, and not everybody can get to a, a physical location for a meeting. So, um Give that some thought. Do you want to keep on doing Zoom forever or what? I don't well, know. If, we, you know, we could we could do a hybrid sort of uh, arrangement yeah, that, yeah. that um, sometimes people can't physically get to a meeting, but if you can, then it's nice to be in the room together. Yeah, yeah. But it's all about it's, safety, right? It's a discussion down the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, listen, thank you very much, everybody. And thank you to Bob for keeping us going here and putting our little... Uh, YouTube video uh, on our website. Yeah, thank you. Great.